Hmm. Oh, you are waiting. Hello. Hello. I'm typing to you in the chat. I am typing to you in the chat. I am a moderately fast typist. Here's me time. Can everyone hear me? First time I joined one of your live streams. Thank you. I will thank you directly, comma, uh, T Wolf. Let that be a lesson to you. If you join one of my live streams, I may thank you very directly. Okay. One day I may get a camera with autofocus. There we go. Finally, I get to see the shit show live and in color. I don't think it's that much of a shit show. I mean, I could draw like, make like a toilet bowl. Sort of like a, if you want a shit show, I don't know, man. Just waiting for somebody to have interesting questions about me and who I am and what I do and why the world is bad and what God is and why God invented different types of rocks, I guess. I don't know. Sort of like that. There you go. Hello, avocado. It's not mandatory, but you are, you're appreciated. Avocado. Avocado. It's like avocados are like big triceratops olives. No one ever thinks about that. It's like a fat, enormous olive. It's a fatty fruit with a pit, but it's too big for anything to eat. No one ever gives it credit for that. Someone says, are you red pill? I'm going to go with no. I'm going to say, according to no, um, the matrix is the origin of the phrase red pill. And what it means is waking up to the truth, no matter how painful it is. I'm red pill in that sense, but in the sense of like, boys are better than girls, you know, not so much. I have a gold colored pencil now. My girlfriend brought it to me. I'm going to make a golden avocado pit. Imagine that. Imagine if you got an avocado and the pit was gold and you had like a little $30,000 nugget inside of your avocado. That'd be cool. Women think they're better looking than men in general. Does the massive makeup use contribute to this? Sure, it contributes, but it is really more of just like a built into nature thing. Women are just perceived as pretty and men are perceived as ugly because men are disposable. Like men have to die to, to keep humanity going. Men have to do hard work. Men have to go on sailboats and down into trenches and men have to do hard stuff. So it would be very difficult for us if we perceived men as being all pretty and beautiful and sweet, because then you wouldn't be able to tell them like, hey, go off to war and die. You, you, men have to be disposable. And in order for them to dispose to be disposable, the less valuable ones have to be kind of ugly. Um, someone says, could you explain the competency scale for the uninitiated? What's the competency scale? What do you mean? Nigerian ostrich says, um, he recalls me saying that the wall is BS in a previous stream. And he says, can you share your perspective? Sure. It's like, here's 18, right? 20, 25, 30, 35 right? Notch, 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 notch. Okay. The amount that the, that the average woman appeals to the average man, it just started at 18, right? It pretty much goes up like from 18 to 20, 21, 22. And then it starts going down real gradual, right? So it's like, I don't know if it's half or less than half at 30. And then by the time it gets to 40, it's way less than, it's something like 5% as much as a young girl, right? It's just not 
as desirable. So the idea that there is some point in here where where women just stop getting attention is ludicrous. They might stop getting attention from top men, you know, but that doesn't really matter to them. They might, there might be a wall where they stop getting attention from the top guys. But every woman I know who's aged through her 30s and heading on towards 40, and some of them even in their 40s and one in her 50s, they all get attention. There's no, they're not hitting, they're not just like, bang, no one will talk to me anymore. They, most of them are doing fine. It's just sort of a silly fantasy. Richard Jackson Cloy says, can you expound on men earning their value and women preserving their value in society? I mean, I don't know if I can expound on it, but um, men are disposable, as I said. And so we don't need that many men to keep reproducing the population. I wonder if I threw this out. I'm getting to the point where I can't fit everything in this book. There it is. So all the women can have babies, right? And so when there's threats coming from the outside, whether this is animals or war or going into coal mines or whatever, the difficult stuff, the men have to go do it. And some of them, you know, some of them die. But then if you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven women, right? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight men. And, and you have all of them live you get seven children per year, right? But if these guys die and you only have two men left, you still get seven children per year. So the way that we've evolved around that is women have to be pretty and desirable, and then men have to go prove that they're worthy. Being a woman makes you worthy, but to be a man, you have to be better than other men. It's just the fact that women carry the child inside of them makes them valuable. Men have to earn the right to be the father. Frederick says, pretty sure I'm level seven moving to eight. What are some of the ways in which level eights think and perceive? Also stated how might I recognize my own level eight thinking. So one of the, one of the big parts of development is, you know, self-recognition and thinking about thinking. It's metacognition. The difference between level seven and level eight, like, let's do this. Let's do six, seven, eight. All right. So at level six, they call it the individualist because you see yourself as a unique individual, right? And you have, let's do individual and you have parts of yourself that are on and off. So like you might have a, a version of yourself that you are around your mother and a version of yourself that you are around your friends and one at work. And all of those things are a part of your unique self, right? At level seven, what you do is you go, again, you go metacognitive on that. And so now what you, what you are rather than being the individual unique self who has all these parts is you are now the observer of it. So you remember how those things have grown over time, the way that I talk to my mom now and the way that I used to, the way that I was at work before and the way that I used to, things that I know now that I didn't used to know. You begin to see yourself in terms of development. So you take this level six self and you see how you've changed throughout, throughout time. Now at level eight, you again go metacognitive. So you begin observing the part of you that's observing you throughout time. So you're, you start seeing these things pop up in the moment. You just go, there is, so at level seven, you, you might say, this part of me is so different from the same part of me before, and it's because of these experiences and you're tracking your own transformation of self to self. But at level eight, you see these things kind of pop up in the moment. This part of me and this part of me are both active and it's strange. They're causing like a conflict. 
and then this part of me is, uh, you know, strangely not present right now. You start to see things like your impulses and your memories and, and at like older aspects of yourself pop up and you become the observer of them rather than being identified with them. They just show up like uh, me and my girlfriend. Sometimes when we have a moment where we're not really understanding each other, we will just expound on that and we'll just go, the part of me that wants approval from you right now thinks that you don't approve of me. And that's getting in the way of my, uh, the part of me that wants to, um, you know, be independent or whatever. We'll just see like this thing pop up and conflict with this thing. And then we start speaking about it. When you get to level eight, that is sort of like how you are all day. All the little parts of you show up and you can see them. Why did God invent different types of rocks, Chet? I must know. God doesn't invent. God sings coal. Your, your question should be, why did God sing various types of rocks into existence? Um, and the answer is because the world wouldn't have meaning without different types of rocks just juxtaposed next to each other. The world wouldn't be as beautiful if we didn't have some ugly rocks and some pretty rocks and some, you know, big rocks and some small rocks. Let's do a little tail there. I don't even know if you can have that note dot. Um, God sings. He doesn't invent. And so rocks are just like one of the things that is a part of the song. Sometimes you have to have like a part of a movie that's really uncomfortable for you to understand the rest of the movie. Joel Longteen. That's funny. Long teen. I thought it said long time. Long time, Joel. Loving your use of integral aqua in your videos. Thank you, Joel. I'm loving it too. I'm going to do a longer levels video this month. I've been meaning to get to it. I'm talking to uh, some people at Integral Life and they're going to do an ad and I've been telling them like, yeah, I'm about to make the video and I keep not getting to it. So I've got to do that real soon. It'll be done before April. Frederick the First. I'm pretty sure level seven moving to eight. Oh, I already got to that one. Thank you, Frederick. Ernesto T. I'm 21M, five foot eight, decent looking, good job. Is it worth it to go all in maxing my bad boy traits or do all mel good, go all mel. What is this word? All mel. Or do all mel good guy traits. My girlfriend left me because I wasn't masculine enough. Ernesto, at age 21, max out your bad boy traits. Just work on them. Just get fit and dress well and become a badass and stand up straight and, you know, rule the room. You know, be mature. Mature. Like, be, grow up. Be a man. Um, at 21, yeah. Like, don't worry about your good guy stuff until you start getting older and have money and get more responsible. Um, just, just bad boy max right now for at least a few years. Like, if you're not fit, get fit. Get big. I'm working out lately. I got a little chubby um, with my success. I, I had to really focus on content and I didn't work out so much. And now I have a girlfriend and she loves me, but she also wants me to work out more. And it's been a great uh, reminder of all the things that I teach. Like I have a girl and she likes me, but she's going to like me a lot more when I don't have kind of like a gut. Um, that's how important it is. My girlfriend loves me, but is still like, I will be more attracted to you if you don't have gut flab. So please realize how big of a key that is, Ernesto. Canyon, Digerness, Digerness. You guys have unpronounceable names. Digerness. What was it? Canyon. Canyon. Digernus. What are your thoughts on the bar has never been lower than it is today? How attainable is it for the average man to reach an eight? The bar is not low. 
they're talking so those girls are talking about the bar being low for good guy stuff the bar is extremely high for bad boy stuff in terms of the physical traits that women want from men the bar has never been higher this is what they don't understand when women say the bar is low they mean the good guy bar i'll just draw this out again i drew it this way and someone told me it was a lot easier to understand i just drew a grid and I did a heart, and then I did a heart, and then I got the red, and I did the red heart, and then X, 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 and then down here, X, 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 and then this heart was blue, and then this was a ghost, nothing here. So this is your good guy score and this is your bad boy score right so when women say the bar has never been lower they're talking about this bar they're talking about this one because it's all they ever admit that's all they ever say out loud they go the bar for treating us well and buying us things and being a good man has never been lower that this is the bar when women are talking about the bar this is the bar they mean this bar is through the goddamn roof, okay? This, the expectations for how tall you are and how attractive you are and all that, that is, women are just unimpressed with you unless you're, like, in the top 1%. And this is, of course, when unfamiliar. When they get to know you, they're a lot more forgiving. But if they don't know you and you don't stand out, like, you have to look, you have to basically look like this. Like, here's a guy, right? Here's a guy. Here's a guy. Here, yeah, here's a guy, right? You have to basically look like this to women. Or else they don't notice you. Um, so that bar is not low. So don't listen to them. They're ridiculous. Uh, C-dubs. I broke up with cheating ex before sex. Now he initiates what he calls half-friendly half-dates. He reaches out, but replies take hours, days. Why would he do this? Are you a girl? You broke up with a cheating ex, and now he is initiating what he calls half-friendly half-date. Why would he do this? He's just trying to get sex out of you. I think. I mean, there's not really a lot of information in your reply. So... You broke up with him, so here's the two of you, right? And here's sex, and you broke up before that, right? So then this never happened, so then you diverted. And then now he's calling you. I'm going to draw an old-style telephone, which no one uses anymore. Bring The telephone is for you. It's connected to the wall. Um, bring. so then he calls you and he goes and he, and he does half friendly, half date. I mean, he's trying to get something out of you, obviously. It seems like he's just hoping that you change your mind, I guess. Um, I mean, I wouldn't hang out with someone who cheated. Just get out of there. Men, Jeremy. Kia Sobik. Kia Sobik. Kia Sobik. Men dig up rocks, set them on fire, and then teach them how to think and ride them into space. It's like sharing in God's creation process, that and making children. Well, yeah, Jeremy, it's true. That's like, I'll give you a big old check mark there. I don't know how you expect me to elaborate on that. Like, yeah men invent things and then fly them to the moon if you believe that if you believe in the moon story um yeah people are pretty cool they and they fly the rockets into hell or whatever cole lecky uh, man you're you're a fan i like that guy um, tips on dropping levels. I feel like metacognitive thing is starting to interfere in the more immediate intermediate Im immediate decisions in life like static. Um, I would not, I don't think that what you're talking about, Cole, is metacognitive because the way that the levels work 
is that if you get to a higher one, you, in most cases, in most cases, it gives you the option to think at a higher level, but you can always go down when you need to. There is a reason, for example, that cops kind of all are the same. They're all at a lower level of thinking because they don't want them wasting time on higher level thinking. So I, I would guess I would say that tips on dropping levels, to answer your question very, very directly, tips on dropping levels would be learn to withhold your own empathy. Learn to just stop caring and just do what you would have done when you were younger, when you were a kid, when you were like a selfish little kid. Learn to, to be the kind of person who can just do that, who can just go like, F everything. This is all about me. Um, when you do that, you're going to have like, you know, lots of thoughts and thoughts and thoughts and thoughts and thoughts. And you have to learn to stop them and go, I don't, I don't value these thoughts above here anymore. I'm going to stop right here. It's a, it's a skill. Austin. So I'm losing weight. And before I put myself back out there, what books do you recommend to learn bad boy, dark triad traits? That's, I need to work on that. Honestly, like I would say definitely 48 laws of power will help with Machiavellianism and um, how to win friends, how to win friends and influence people that will help with some Machiavellian traits as well. But as far as something that is specifically about dark triad bad boy traits, I don't have great recommendations. Like these are my favorite books for being a powerful person and learning to manipulate social energy, which is what women are most attracted to in the dark triad. I maxed good guy and no bad boy. Yeah, try 48 Laws of Power. Try that one first, I guess. All Of all the ones I know, that one's good. You might also just read Fifty Shades of Grey and just figure out what it is that women like about it and then be that because, man, that works. Works real good. Baxter Maxter. LC overall is six. Okay, cool. What first date ideas in New York City should I be starting on with the aim of a long-term relationship, possibly marriage to a woman? Leave New York City. Your first date idea should be let's buy a house in Vermont. Get away from New York City. Um, so your first date ideas are going to really depend on the girl that you're taking out for a date. You're, if you want for your date to end in marriage, if you want for your relationship to go towards marriage, your first date should be something that shows that you really know her and understand her and something that's really memorable for her. The first date can't just be like, let's go to the barcade. Ugh, girls like video games or whatever. It can't just be like a thing that's around. If you really, if you really are aiming for marriage with a particular one, the first date should be something really cool. And that's going to be very different from person to person. Like if she loves... Uh, uh, Broadway, you know, take her to a show. Like the, the show that she's been waiting to see, that sort of thing. If you really want marriage, you really want that lasting relationship. Um, you want to make an impression. And that means knowing like who she is. Again, my girlfriend, I to talking about her a lot because it's going so well. Um, on our first date, it was, uh, she, she visited me on Valentine's day and, uh, she asked for a few things. She was like, I like this, this, and this. And I got her the exact perfect versions of them. And she was so happy about it. This is Broadway. Broadway. Broadway shows. Um, so it's like tailoring your, your date creation ability to her specific needs is what you want to do. So get to know her. Um, Canyon Didgernis again. Hello, sir. They say the bar is low because any guy is average height or taller can improve their physique and get a good job is enough. Um, I mean, yeah, it's enough for some of them. What is enough? It's such an abstract question, man. What is enough for who? What is enough for the for the market? Okay. Let me let me put it to you this way. What is enough 
if you are an American guy and you're going for like an average-ish, maybe a six-ish American girl, right? What is enough is average height or better, okay? Um, good shape, be in shape, decent job, all right? All right, know how to have a conversation. Having a conversation isn't just like talking about whatever or saying, oh, I like video games, I like this bar. You have to be able to ask her a question that makes her think about herself. That's what conversation is really about. You've got to be able to say something to her that makes her go, oh, look at that, a new thought, right, about me. Hmm, what can I answer about myself? Now I'm exploring myself. It can't just be superficial stuff. Do you have a sister or something? What else is... What else is enough? That's a uh, height, good shape, decent job, conversation available, right? You can't just like not answer the phone or be at work or something. Uh, don't cheat. Let's just go exclusive. You know, girls get addicted to you sometimes if you cheat, but getting addicted to you and actually liking you is not the same thing. Um, be interesting. All right, do some stuff other than just your job in video games. Be in a chess club or go hiking or split wood or something. Okay. There's a little hatchet. So you can split wood with it. Whoosh. Um... As a, as a really cursory, you know, beginning level answer to your question, if you're saying what is enough, average-ish height, good shape, decent job, be able to provide something, be good at conversation, which means ask her something about herself that makes her think about herself, be available for her so she's not constantly like, do you, where are you, right? Uh, be exclusive, no other girls, Okay. And then be interesting, do something like be on stage or whatever, other than just like, I exist. Um, if you can do that, you're definitely enough, okay? All right. Chiu Baka. Quit telling people to move to Vermont. We're sick of people. Well, you know what, Vermont? I'm sick of the fact that I don't live in Vermont because I'm around too many people and they're disgusting. Um, but I also I understand because when I move to Vermont... I am also going to not want people to move to Vermont, so I get it. But um, I'm coming, and you can't stop me. I'm, gonna, I'm going to the Green Mountains, and I'm going to open up a maple ice cream shop, and you're going to hate it. Going to Vermont, got to have a maple ice cream. Going to Vermont, going to piss off Chewbacca. Chewbacca. Uh, living says, I have a hard time understanding what I'm told or what I read, even if it's simple. I get confused easily and I don't know why. Is there any advice for it? I mean, you might have dyslexia. Um, you have a hard time understanding what I'm told or what I read, even if it's simple. I get confused easily and I don't know why. I mean, I'm not like a... I, I have some level of expertise in devel developmental psychology. I don't really know, like, psychological or communication pathologies. I'm not diagnosing you with dyslexia, but you might have, like, a brain problem. Um, have you been to the doctor? Have you been to, like, a professional? I, I wouldn't be like, have you ever banged your head? Did you 
eat lead paint chips as a kid or something. Hard time understanding what I'm told or what I read of it. I mean, the only thing that comes to mind for me is dyslexia. I would say call a professional. Jeremy Kiasovic, again. Uh, This guy. Thank you, Jeremy. Jeremy. I'm going to color in your name with gold because you spent 50 bucks on that. Jeremy Kiasovic. Um, thank you, Jeremy. That's the best you've done with my pseudonym so far. Oh, great. Cool. Grats. As for a question, would men getting paid properly solve a lot of these relationship issues? Yes, it would, because women don't understand themselves and they don't know what they're asking. How would you counter the inflation that destroys everyone's savings? Uh, I mean, I can't really say that. I'll get in trouble. The feds will knock on my door. How do we counter the inflation? It's like our whole government is basically treasonous. They're just destroying the country. Um, but yeah, so if men getting paid properly would solve a lot of problems because as, as we have been over, right, women evaluate men pretty harshly when they don't know them. And when they do not know them, they evaluate them a lot more fairly and what they evaluate them on is first of all you know how much attractiveness do you have and then when once you have a certain level of it if it's very low you know how much how nice are you to me so if you're low attractive you're not getting anything right if you're medium attractive you can be like well he's enough right and he's really good to me he's enough and he's good enough to me is settling it's blah right or if you're really attractive, you can get into any of these zones. So men getting paid more is this. It's this. And sometimes it's this depending on the job. Like if you have a regular work a day job, it's this. So if if we didn't go through all this stuff to redistribute money from men to women, there would be men, more men able to move like from here to here or even from here to here, and in some cases, from one of these zones to one of these. Men having money moves you, would move us all this way a lot, and some of us this way a little. It That's what I'm saying in all those videos, that when we decided that we're just going to take all the money from men and give it to women, well, now the women are making a lot of money for, you know, drinking smoothies and doing yoga and contributing nothing. Like a lot of, like not all of them. Some women are, Oh, some, some women are so valuable. Sure. That's true. But a lot of women just have like these busy work jobs. And, um, a lot of women who are good at their jobs are getting paid more than they would if we didn't have these rules. And a lot of them are getting hired, even though they're not the best person for the job. It's a redistribution. They're, we're, we're distributing value from men to women, and then women are looking at men and saying, well, you don't have value, so why would I be attracted to you? So yeah, that question is yeah, absolutely resoundingly yes. Yeah, if, if we didn't redistribute the money, women would be more attracted to men in general. Um, and it would solve a lot of relationship issues, yeah. Uh, the man making less than the woman is one of the biggest uh, predictors of getting cheated on. So if you're a man making 100K and your wife makes 50, you're probably going to be fine. But if all of a sudden you lose your job, you have to get another one, you're making 40, most women will not like that and will stop liking you. That's just how humans are. So yeah. It's a lot of relationship issues. Hi, sleeper. Sup, HM. Been a minute. What's your advice for getting people to be motivated again? Well, people have to be motivated for what they want. If you want someone to be motivated, you need to know what they want. Like some people like the beach and some people like mountains. Some people like, um, I don't know, money. Some people like cars. You have to know what it is that people want and you have to show them like, how is it? What is the way exactly that you get the thing you want? 
Everybody wants something. Like uh, right now I want a house. And if someone could show me a great way to get a house faster, I would be like, ooh, that's motivating, you know? Um, I want to fix my country. If someone could show me, hey, here's how you get rid of a tyrannical government that is, um, you know, destroying the people, uh, I would be like, oh, that's really motivating. Um, in order to get people motivated, you have to you have to connect them to the things that they already want. You can't make them want things. You have to connect them to what they already want. This is what you do. Sh show them how to get from where they are to where they want to be. Frederick, uh, at what level would you say begins the understanding of an appreciation for low lower levels along with the better ability to drop to them? Seven, for sure. That was like the easiest question. Um, definitely not at anything below seven does that happen at all. At level six, the idea that there are levels is kind of offensive. At level five, they understand that people are different, but they don't particularly care to be like them. And at level four, they perceive levels as just being basically good or bad person. And at level three, they perceive levels as being useful or not useful. So absolutely, the answer is seven and I'm going to color it in because it's fun sort of ultraviolet or whatever my favorite little seven color um Montana Emerald with how dating games have become what are your thoughts on increasing amounts of passport bros in in the west well i've been over this and over this montana emerald i'll sort of say it again for you but my thoughts on the passport bros is that they they kind of feel put out you know they feel like they feel like you know i showed up and i did what i was supposed to do you know like i showed up with a good attitude and i did what i was supposed to do and then all the women who were supposed to be, you know, available for me, they were like, ew, that's not enough. Ugh, I make more money than you. Ew, I kicked and screamed until I got a job that I barely earned. And now I make twice as much money as you because you didn't get the job. And so you're not good enough for me. Uh. And so then that makes these men go, oh, well, if all the women are like this, then I got to get out of here. Um. So, like, I feel bad that their lives are like that, and I understand what they're doing. My thoughts on the increasing amount of them is, like, it's it's directly due to the situation that we have where we're not relating to each other. Um, and is being one a good idea? I mean, what do you mean by good? It, it's, it has, a, like, a, a whole series of cascading effects that I can't begin to comment on. It's, it has a lot to do with where you go and who you meet and what your intentions are and how much you care about your original culture. Like, I would never want to be a passport bro. I would never want to do it. I would never want to meet, like, a woman from um, Laos or something and just be like, well, you're better than an American woman. You're not so greedy. And then learn to speak little bits of Laotian or something. I just wouldn't want to. I don't view that as good because I really care about, you know, like f f fireworks and apple pie and stuff. I, I want my I want my country and culture to thrive and to be the same as it always was and to be better than it always was. I, I view um, the United States as, you know, America and its people and culture as being one of the most important parts of our history a lot of what we consider important has come from it. So, you know, w whether it's good or not really depends on what you value. I don't value it. I don't value anything that I could get from it. If you just want to have a child with someone and it doesn't really matter what culture she's from or if she understands you or if she's anything like you or, you know, I don't I don't know if the passport bros are going out of the country and meeting someone and it's like, oh, we have so much in common. I can't I couldn't imagine that that's the case. Maybe it is. 
I don't know. But I couldn't imagine that it is. It sounds... It sounds to me like you're basically meeting someone who you have nothing in common with and just saying, I have more money because I'm not from here. That sounds like most of it. And I would never do that personally. Uh, okay, I can't write on the back. Um, Jay just gave me $5. Thank you, Jay. Five bucks from Jay. Thanks. Jay bucks. Uh, dark light images. As a Christian, I have some difficulties incorporating some of the things you talk about, specifically increasing my bad boy traits. Any advice? Just be a bad boy for Jesus, dude. He said, sell your cloak and buy a sword. Jesus wants you to be strong. Like, I, if you are interpreting Christianity as just, like, be a bitch and whine a lot, Christianity does not mean be nice. Jesus did not say be nice. Nowhere in the Bible does Jesus say, you should drink a lot of soy milk and cry and be a bitch and let people, um, you know, hurt you and spit in your face. And he didn't say that. What he said was do the right thing and adhere to the truth. That's basically, he says, pick up your cross and follow me. If you don't think that's bad boy shit, you're not reading the Bible correctly. Pick up your cross and follow me. That means do your duty. And doing your duty is not always nice. And it's not always easy. I, I really hope that you're not one of those people who thinks that being a Christian just means smiling a lot and saying that's okay when bad things happen, because you're wrong. That's not what it is. It's not what Christianity is. Okay? So just be a bad boy for Jesus. Um. <laughs> Martin Durkin. Okay. Durkin. I remember that because I had the same impulse to, to do Durkin donuts. I'm very hungry for donuts. My girlfriend has me on a diet. Um, my doctor told me I had to quit uh, having enjoyment time with myself. I asked her if she was serious and she said yes, at least until I finish examining you. Yes, this classic joke. Can you draw C-dubs running away from her cheating acts? Who is C-dubs? God, that's someone who texted me earlier. I broke up with cheating ex. Now he initiates. Um, I mean, what does she look like? Can you draw C-dubs running away from her cheating ex? So I'm just going to imagine that C-dubs has like a buzz cut. I don't know why. This is what she's like. And an earring. And I'm going to imagine her looking back at him. And just kind of having a weird look about her. And um, and she'll be wearing like a, a dress with straps. And she's just really stacked for some reason. I don't know. And she's just running. Her arms are like... Arms are like that. Running. Here's her dress. I don't know why she's in, she's in like a house dress. And then here's, I'll put her in heels. Okay, there's C-dubs running from her cheating ex with like kind of her underwear is showing, which is really embarrassing, but she wasn't planning on running. There's her shoes and there's her calves, right? And she's running away and her cheating ex is like, a, I don't know. Looking at her as well. And he's just going to have like, um, I'm not going to do him as well because I got to move on to the next question. But he's just going to have like other girls in his arms. And he's running too. All right, I've drawn it for you. You're welcome. Chewbacca, if I was afforded the ability to gatekeep for Vermont, I suppose you'd be acceptable. Well, thanks. I'm going to Vermont then, maybe. 
I think I'm going to go to New Hampshire soon. I'm going to go camping. I mean, I'm, I want to see Mount Washington. Check out ECF Iber areas. What? ECF Iber. Okay. EC Fiber. Okay. Oh, fiber. Okay. Fiber internet in a rural setting. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. I might just get that Tesla thing, the satellite. That, uh, the satellite thing that just shoots internet at you from the moon or whatever. Um, what is it? Starlink? It's like a Russian talking about a bird. Starlink. It is startling. Chirp, chirp. Startling. Living. Not dyslexic. It's like my brain sometimes goes blank or I can't keep a train of thought or I can't think through things. My brain is shut off. Um, not going to be able to really help through little bits of text. Living. Um, if you want to inbox me, maybe I could find the time for you. But also, I want to let you know that, like, pathologies are way outside of my expertise. Like what I, what I do with life coaching is I help people clear up their thoughts, uh, through, you know, meditative, um, spiritual self-observation practices. And I don't do so much like, oh, you have uh, schizophrenia. Here's the cure for that. That's, it's just kind of like way outside of what I do. So I understand why you're, why you're coming to me and asking me, but this whole thing of like you experiencing these constant brain malfunctions is something you probably just should see a medical professional about. It's not really a coaching issue that I can help with. I, I would love to help and I will talk to you about it if you want to, but I don't think I'm your number one option. Andrew White, you had a chart that made different relationships. Could you do an entire video on it? Partner one, partner two. First was block. I don't understand how to get to each one. Oh, you mean this one. I will do an entire video on it. There's this guy who I've done. I met him recently. Um, he did this. He created this. His name is Martin Nuchik. He's a cool guy. And these are the levels. So this is level one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then the same here. And this is this grid is what happens when these people are in relationships together. So a lot of people end up in this codependence, marry, divorce cycle. This is when people, when things are going good, they're together. When they're going bad, they're broken up. They break up, they see other people that come back together, right? We're all familiar with that. Most people in the world are here emotionally. And then there are people who are like traditional Christians or Muslims or something or whatever their culture is. And they go, I'm supposed to do this. You're supposed to do that. And they have that kind of relationship. And then there are modern people and something that you hear from those people is like, you are adding to my life, not completing it. They view themselves as individuals. And it's like, I have my whole life. You have your whole life. And we are in partnership, almost like it's a business. The, the grid helps you understand where you might be and where your partner might be. I have had a ton of relationships where if I'm partner one, I've had a ton of relationships where I was, uh, I had only a couple relationships when I was here. And that was with girls who were mostly here and a few of them here and never anything else. When I was here, I had relationships mostly with girls who were here and a few here. And they were tumultuous because when men are in this level, it's difficult for them to have relationships, which I can go into when I do a video on this. For a really long time, I was at this level. I believe I'm at this one now. And when I was here, my relationships were almost exclusively um, at this level. So if this was partner one, that's me. And then partner two, I met a ton of girls at level six. And I would require things from them that they didn't want to give to me. And they would require things from me that I didn't want to give to them. It was like... Um, it says man worn out by woman. The way that women at this level would 
just sort of repeat the same behaviors over and over again and try to pull me back down and, and conflict with me and tell me that my, you know, development of this level is actually, they, they, the way that development works is that they see it as when you go higher, they see it as lower. If somebody is at this level and has never been beyond and you're operating from here, they don't understand that you're higher. They see it as lower. So when I'm here and the girl is here, she thinks I'm here or even here. And she'll moral lecture at me and nah, 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 nah. and I know that she's wrong, but she, that's what makes it so difficult is that they don't want to consider that they might be wrong and grow. They just want you to admit that you're wrong. That's most of my experience with that, this relationship right here. It's a woman chides lectures, man. That's what I mean. Um, yeah, maybe I could do a whole video on this. I definitely need to clarify these things a little bit more. I'll rewrite them. But yeah, that's, uh, Martin Nuchik is an integral guy. He's pretty cool. Jeremiah B. Galway. How, how do I stop being baited and disrespected? What do you mean baited? I'll have good chemistry and not suck totally, but it always happens. I'm in college. It's discouraging. Can someone explain to me what baited means? Like, are you getting catfished or what? I wish I knew what that means, man. I can't answer you without knowing what baited means. Um, Sheik Daddy, hey. A uh, man can't be a leader of the family finance if she makes more money. Right. Women say they want an emotional connection, but part of that is leadership. Right. Exactly. Yes. She, she, daddy gets it. Um, if the man doesn't earn more, then he can't make the decisions. If the woman is earning the money, then she has control over the money. And, and unless she just gives it to him, which they usually are not going to do, then it's like, um, you know, I'll just use this <laughs> illustration. If she has more... And he has less. And he's like, hey, you should do what I say. She's going to go, ugh, no, I have more power than you. Women want you to have more power than them. It's so stupid. We're, we live in such a stupid time. Women want you to have more power than them. And then they cry and whine and, and say it's a crime. And, oh, you're oppressing me until you give them power. They want you to just hand power to them. And then when you do, they go, oh, fuck you. You're worthless. It's dumb. It's just, we live in a, the dumbest time. We have all this technology and everyone's brain dead. Logan says, how much have, how much have you to looked into, how much have you looked into Bitcoin as freedom technology? I mean, I know how the blockchain works. I kind of get Bitcoin. I owned some Bitcoin a long time ago, but I didn't hold it. Even if you don't like it, you'll find a lot of allies in those who are focused on Bitcoin. Yeah, I, I do talk to a guy on Twitter, blockchain boy, and he seems to know what he's talking about. But I'm no, I'm no expert on crypto. Thought on Jesus' teaching, turn the other cheek. Yeah, so when... That area of the Middle East was occupied by Rome. Um, they were allowed to strike you on one cheek, but not the other. Because they had, like, toilet hands, you know? And they were allowed to force you to carry the cross, you know, one mile, but not two. And they were uh, allowed to. There were certain rules about what they were allowed to force you to do. So turn the other cheek just means like we're not allowed to fight back. So make them, you know, force them to either not do a bad thing or do a bad thing in a in a bad way. Turn the other cheek is basically the same thing Gandhi did. It's when he went out in public and he said, um, I'm going to violate your rules in a way that shows that you are oppressing me. So if they go to hit you on this side, they're allowed to. So if you turn this cheek, they're not allowed to. So if they hit you anyway, then they're in trouble. It was 
like a form of civil disobedience. Turn the other cheek doesn't mean let them hit you twice. It means use the resistance that you have. Sea Rebel. Been single years. What should I do to get someone? <sighs> Dude, just watch my whole catalog. Like it's all I ever talk about. If you've been single for years, what you, should, what you should do to get someone is become more attractive. And there's enormous number of ways to do that. Mostly physical fitness and growing and competence, being good at something, get social skill, get social status. You know, I, it's all that I ever talk about. Just watch my whole catalog. Austin. Just giving you money now. Thank you, Austin. Love your content. I get annoyed by red pillars and honest woman haters. Yeah, your content is a great logical area while being funny. Thank you, Austin. The Milkman. Sorry for being off topic, but really want your opinion on this. I'm currently single and live alone, but I make money by commissions for furry and anime smut. How do I tell girls that's my job? Do you have to tell them? I don't really understand. Why are you telling girls what you do? Why can't you just go like, oh, I do day trading or some shit? Like, can't, can't you just... Can't you just tell them something else? So you make furry pornography, and you are ashamed of it, and you don't want to tell women what you do. Like, if you if there's going to be a woman in your life, you're going to be ashamed for her to know that you draw animals, anthropomorphized animals, engaged in perverted sexual acts with each other. Have you ever thought about not doing that with your life? Like, that's an option. Um, how much money are you making, man? You make money by commissions. I would definitely say do something different with your life, for one thing. And for another thing, you could just tell as many women as you want that that's what you do and pick the ones that like it. Biggie. Hey, Biggie. Um, nice donation. Thank you. I recently started up making upwards of six figures a year. Me too. We all should be by this point. Like six figures a year right now is like $30,000 a year in 1980. What's your advice on vetting gold diggers or financially driven women? Oh, don't let them know that you make money. My girlfriend right now, she was gushing all over me and, oh, I love you. And I here's all the reasons you should be with me for weeks before she knew how much. And then when I told her, she was like, oh, my God, that's way better. Um, don't let them know. Don't don't drive around in a fancy car or whatever. If you want. If you want to attract women, you can show them that you have money, right? If you want to attract women that don't care about money, you have to hide that you have money and see if they like you for other things. You don't like, don't vet them. Just don't demonstrate that you have wealth. Um, I wish I could talk about that more, Biggie. You d donated a lot. But I, I don't know what else to say. It's like, if someone knows that you make a lot of money and you want to check to see what she's interested in, you have to kind of take her on a coffee date and see if she enjoys it. Like, see how much she likes the money as compared to how much she likes you. Which um, which thing is she more excited about? Again, in my relationship, when I spend money on my girlfriend, it makes her happy. But it does not make her as happy as when I give her personal attention. When I look at her and spend time with her, that makes her very, very happy. And when she says that she wants a thing and I get her the thing, she goes, oh, good, thank you. And it's not like she likes the thing more than me. Pay attention to that. Jeremiah. Bait equals... Oh, okay. Bait equals flirt, chemistry, no show date. Okay. Has happened countless times. Also, only ugly chicks give me attention. It's so frustrating in uni. Let me go back to your old comment, Jeremiah. How do I stop being baited and disrespected of good chemistry? Okay. 
Jeremiah. Flirt chemistry, no show. Um, okay. If that's happening to you a lot, flirt chemistry, no show date. If that's happening to you a lot, it's so hard to understand what you're saying. Bait equals, how do I stop getting baited and disrespected? Bait equals flirt chemistry, no show date. So are you talking about dating apps? How do you have chemistry if it's a no show date? You have chemistry on a, on an app? It's happened countless times. Flirt, chemistry, no show date. Also, only ugly chicks give me attention, like seek me out. If that's happening to you, it probably is just, oh, and then he says, the chicks baiting me are not ugly ones, by the way, to be clear. Okay, well, you just need to increase your attractiveness, Jeremiah. I mean, I'm going to click on your, can I see your profile? Not really. All I have is a thumbnail, but it's pretty obvious to me that if, if, Ugly chicks are seeking you out, and then attractive chicks are like uh, talking to you and then not showing up. You're not attractive enough for them. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry to break it to you, but there there are no techniques for overcoming not being attractive. Are you in shape? Do you have a good face? Are you dressing well? Um, you know, if you're if you have maximized your attractiveness, you have to take the women you get. If you have not maximized your attractiveness, you have to get in shape, you know, get some muscles, lose the fat, don't have the big belly, um, learn to learn to dress well, um, make sure you're showering and everything like that. But if if you are not looks maxed, then you need to looks max, right? Make sure you look as good as you can. If you are looks maxed, you need to take the women that you are getting. Because, the, like, attraction is not negotiable. It, it, I, and again, I can't tell from your picture. But if you're a man and you're a four, you might just have to find a woman who's a four. I, I Every once in a while, I get a guy who comes to me and he's a four. And he's like, how do I get, like, a harem of nines? And it's like, you don't. You're not going to be a Hollywood celebrity. They don't hire people like you for that. You have to accept who you are and also accept the girls who like you after you've made the best of yourself. I don't think that there are any tricks about that. Um, but I'm not saying you're ugly or anything. I can't see your picture again. I just... You need to maximize your appeal. C-dubs, I'm a model, fashion, makeup, not only fans. STEM degree, low miles, homemaking skills, very cultured. How best leverage these skills, these traits for exclusivity with good boyfriend? Was told I made X look rich, was still cheated on. Okay. Okay, so you're saying you have very high value. You're a model, right? So you have high attractiveness. And you're saying STEM degree, which, I mean, it's nice, but it doesn't matter a whole lot. I've drawn a lot of dollars here today. Um, STEM degree, low miles, homemaking skills, very cultured. How best leverage these traits for exclusivity? Okay, here's, here's what I'm going to say to you. If you are out dating and you're sleeping with a bunch of different guys, stop that. Okay. If you are, if you have all these traits, if you have, you have, um, looks, if you're a model, if you have money, STEM degree, and you are, you know, homemaking, if you have all these traits and you are also not like sleeping with a bunch of dudes, then what you need to do is find a guy and tell him, Hey, look, I have all this value, right? Um, I'm not going to sleep with you. You have to just date me for a while. And, you know, like the old days. And then once you prove yourself, then we can be a couple. And if he says no, then you move on. Something about what you're telling me tells me that you might be getting up to some things that you shouldn't be. And then, and then you're going to other guys and saying like, Hey, you should like marry me, even though I just, you know, this with someone else three days ago, 
I'm not accusing you of that. I'm just saying that if it's true what you're saying, that you have all this value and nobody's treating you like you have any value, that's just the number one um, suspicion that I have. I suspect that there's that that's most likely to be what is amiss. Um, exclusivity comes from people who want to give it to you. And the only way that you can get someone who wants to give it to you is filter out the people who don't. And it sounds to me from what you're saying that you're just not filtering out the people who don't. So you have to do that. Um, Frederick the first. Awesome. I'm a level seven then. Yeah, probably. You seem like it. I, like you, have a ton of frustration that many of us seem to be stuck at level six. Yes, it is very annoying when people do that. Uh, what are some perspectives that will help me grow in appreciation for level six? Once again, just keep going. Like everything that you've been doing, just keep going. Keep growing. Keep observing yourself. And then when you get far enough away from it, you will gain an appreciation for it again. It'll seem like childhood when you get distance from it. Ketonia Foods, very solid with women, but they're always more serious, but I'm focused on my businesses. How do I ethically be a hoe until I have time for a serious long-term relationship? You can't ethically do it. Very solid with women, but they're always more serious, but I'm focused on my business. Okay, so what you're saying is you get a lot of women. They want to be with you. You don't want to be with them because you're focused on money, right? How do you do that ethically? You can't, you can't do it. So women will tell you all the time that we're just going to, oh yeah, sure, we'll just do this. But what they mean is, you know, it'll grow later and you'll love me later. They all mean that. They're all trying to trap you. Um, every girl that I've ever met who has said, oh, yeah, we can just do this for short term. What it means is, like, we can do this for this short term, and by then you'd better love me, or else I'm going to cry and cry and cry. That's what women do. So if you're going to do that with women, you just have to understand you're very, very likely to be hurting a lot of them um, emotionally. There's no such thing as doing that ethically. Like, you're talking nonsense. When you go, oh, ethical non-monogamy, it's just word salad. It's just nonsense. It's like saying, uh, uh, you know, health at every size and, uh, you know, 72 genders is just nonsense. It's just absolute, just echoing, resonating nonsense. Like, doing it ethically, like having tons and tons and tons of one-night stands ethically the only way to do it ethically is if nobody gets hurt and there's no way to tell that beforehand like girls will lie all the time if they like you they think more is going to come and then it never does Cole Lecky, thoughts on the second amendment erosion of rights time to water the tree I mean I don't know what to tell you about that dude it's a bad situation like there definitely isn't any response I can give you on that in public. There's, what is there, 793 people watching? And I the, I can't tell you anything about that in public. It's just that the way that the government has taken away our rights is just absolutely unacceptable and it is infuriating. It makes me sick to my stomach. I don't know what to do about it. I, I don't think anyone knows what to do about it. I think that we're surrounded by a bunch of stupid cowards who don't want to, they don't value their rights very much. But um, I just don't, I don't have any suggestions. People need to become more conscious. They need to say it out loud. That's the only, that's the only thing I can tell you is that you need to say out loud with your mouth. you know, bad, you need to talk about the bad things that are happening, because I've met too many people who are just cowards, and when I tell them, hey, you know this bad thing that is happening, they'll go, oh, shh, and that's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen.
they're like they look like worms to me the milkman uh originally i wanted to be an animator for movies but one thing led to another now i make five to seven k a month okay i don't want to make smut for the rest of my life but i don't know how to go back to what i want to do so just make money like if you're making that much money just explain it to girls that way just say hey look okay i draw foxes or whatever what do they call it yiffing is it yiff yiff I just draw foxes, but I make 7000 a month. Just tell them that. Um, if, they, if the money isn't good enough for them, then nothing will be, right? And if you want to go back to something that's more respectable, then go back to something that's more respectable and don't have the money. But I think that that how like embarrassing and ridiculous this is, probably you'd make up for it by saying five to seven K a month. I think most girls would respect that. Biggie, thanks, man. Can you elaborate more on what light and dark optimism is and why it's important in regards to masculinity? My whole life I've been a very, it may work out or it may not, I don't know, I still do it anyway. Okay, I think what you mean. Oh, hey, sneak peek. This is from my next video. Ooh. Um. So, when you say light and dark optimism, I think what you're talking about here is light and dark confidence, right? So light confidence is optimistic and that would be self-assured and positive. So light, light confidence is optimistic, self-assured and positive. Dark confidence is like, I'm better than others. I always get what I want and I am dangerous. Nobody better mess with me. Right? So it's not light and dark optimism. It's light and dark confidence the light kind is like really positive and inclusive and we're all going to make it and everything's going to be fine. And the dark kind is like dark triad, like I'm better than everyone and everything always goes my way and I'm going to do whatever I want. Girls like both of those things, but you have to know which situations they like them in. So what was your question? It was elaborate more that and why it's important in regards to masculinity. Oh yeah, because you need to know when women want you to be supportive and when they want you to be selfish. Sometimes women like it when you're selfish. Sometimes. Um and sometimes they want you to be like a good dad, you know, or a leader like a team leader. Um if you have no darkness in you at all, you probably are not going to be attractive to anyone. But if you have no lightness in you at all, you probably are not going to be a good partner to anyone. And I think that that's a pretty good answer. Kaito. Curious about your hypergamy chart discussions and its implications across human cultures across time. Are there demonstrable pros of low hypergamy? It's not low hypergamy that I'm trying to promote its consciousness of hypergamy that I'm trying to promote. I want people to be aware of it. So it's not that I'm saying that there should be more or less hypergamy. It's that I'm saying we need to understand how it happens so that you know your place in the great circle of life. Jam jars McFly. Doing laundry earlier, thinking about my situation, using your thinking about thinking, got to my trauma, froze, then recognized that I was freezing, pushed and reached past, had this moment where it felt like everything fell into place. Okay, great. I, it, this is one of those things where it doesn't sound like I, I have a lot to add. It sounds like you're just saying that you did a thing that I recommended and it worked. I hope that's right. Recognized I was freezing, pushed and reached past, has this moment where everything felt into place. Yeah, so it sounds like my advice is actually helping you transform your thinking and help you take mastery of your own life. And in which case, I am doing everything correctly. Thank you. Martin Durkin, my theory is that C-dubs feels like she's 9 or 10 and ignoring the not people. He's cheating. X is a 1%er. Maybe, Martin. C-dubs gave me 
precious little information on her situation. Jeremiah Bigalway, I'm a 195 benching, 240, six foot plain. I don't know how to describe myself, not a brag. Is there any tips socially? I look completely mid average. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say to you that I didn't say in the last one. Like, I can't see you. You, you, you can't write things on a keyboard and then I know what who you are and what you're like. I can't see you. I don't know how you act. I don't know what you, you... What you're doing right now is kind of like trying to fit a whole coaching session into a couple of comments. There's not enough information that you're giving me. 195 benching, 246 foot plane, not a brag. And and you're, you're, the hot girls are kind of messing with you and the ugly girls are coming after you. There is Jeremiah. Here's what I'll say. I'm, there's something about you that women in general don't like. I don't know what it is. I can't see you. Okay. I'm not looking at you on camera. You haven't filled out my form for coaching or anything. I, I can't see you. Whatever it is that women don't like about you, you've got to change. Hopefully you can change it. Maybe you can't. Some of us are just born with something that doesn't change. At that point, you would begin to get more attention. And if you began to get more attention, then you would need to know what to do with it. And then I would check with you on that. That's how I would coach you. I can't really do that in a live. It's just not really the place for that kind of question. Um, you know, maybe when I open up coaching again, get a session and I'll tell you what I think it is. I, I've been pretty good at that before. Alonso, what's pen? P-E-N-20. I recently divorced my wife and moved in with my female best friend. Um, she likes me, but is eight years younger. I do like her, but platonically for now, I do see myself dating her a few years, though. What roots do you see for me? Okay, recently divorced my wife, moved in with my best friend. Okay, like, cool. Sounds great. She likes me. Eight years younger. Is that a problem? How old are you, Alonso? Eight plus what? Um, I do like her, but platonically for now, I see myself dating her a few years. What risk do you see for me? You're moved in with her and you see her, do you see yourself dating her later? What roots do you see for me? I mean, I don't see really the relationship. Like if you're living with her, if you're eight years apart, you're living with her and you don't see yourself dating her for years. I don't even know why you're considering it right now. The roots I see for you are you getting a place of your own. And then, um, you know, putting your life together and all that. And then, um, I don't know. Are you waiting till she turns 18? Yeah, <laughs> my girlfriend is in the room. Um, I mean, how old? Yeah, that's a good question is how old is she? Um, do you want to say my girlfriend has entered here. Show show them your our matching rings again. Clink, matching ring power. We're okay. basically married. We were, but yeah, th this is it's going great. Um, Alonso, I don't know what to tell you. Like, just treat the situation like a friendship situation, and if you really want to do it, do it later when you're on your feet. Feet. Um, the menace ten dollars. Dating seems irresponsible when life is a mess. Yes, that's pretty true. So I stay single when life gets crazy to work on myself, but I see friends, family dating when their life is a mess. Am I looking at this the wrong way? No. You're kind of doing the responsible thing. There are some people who, you know, date when their life is a mess. You know, it's quality of life, right? Quality of life. If you've got the halfway point here. There are some people who date down here in this mess area. I try not to do that. I try not to drag people into this. It's hard to come up with a whole chart on the spot, but there's a type of person who will date you in the mess area, and then there's a type of person who will only date you in the good area. And the, the thing is, what I find is that the people who will date you in the mess area are usually the ones you'd rather be with. If there's somebody who is only going to date you in the good area of your life, it's kind of not you necessarily that they like. So when you say, are you looking at this the wrong way? Not necessarily. You're trying to protect people from 
the worst parts of your life. But if someone shows up in your life and likes you even though you are a mess, I wouldn't say no. Let's draw an X there. I wouldn't say no. I wouldn't say go try to date particularly before you have your life together. But I also wouldn't say turn people down. Um, Biggie, can you give me some examples of a woman wanting me to be selfish? Oh God. Um, usually that like that can happen in bed. That can happen with making decisions that can be like, I am in charge of, you know, where we're going to eat and what we're ordering. It can be, um, women very often want you to just make decisions and they feel satisfied when you are the one who makes the decision. Uh, when you are selfish t towards other people. So if you're competing for some kind of a contract at work or something and you are the winner and you do something that really ruins the other guy, she doesn't want you to be fair. She wants you to win. That kind of selfishness is what they're looking for. Uh, Al Gore, can you draw a smile? Because I think a lot of us need to remember to smile. Okay. I mean, can I draw a smile? Sure. Let's do this goofy cartoon smile. teeth. There's teeth, right? There is your requested drawing. Smile. Um, Jeremiah, when is coaching open? I, uh, right now it's closed. I'm working on videos. What's it like? You Basically, you fill out a form and I talk to you about what you wrote for an hour. I, I figure you out and I try to lead you through whatever it is you're experiencing. Um, it's on my link tree, Jeremiah. I've gotten his coaching and it's like enlightenment on demand. Yeah, yeah. She had a really good experience. Um, Alonzo says, I'm 33, she's 25, is a friendship, but she has started to be very affectionate and flirting. The more I focus on me, the more she hits on me. As I'm I moved as roommates, though, to save some money. Let me read that again. I'm 33. She's 25. It's a friendship, but she has started to be very affectionate and flirting. So you're living with her and she's being affectionate and flirting? That's pretty clear. Like, if you're living in her place and she's flirting with you, probably pretty clear. And the more you focus on me, the more she hits on me. Um, I mean, from what you're telling me, I'd say that you're in the clear. And I would say probably relax a little bit about don't worry so much but uh make sure that you're right that she's hitting on you be sure of that right don't just make sure you're not just imagining it tay says do you believe in soulmates mine is right here <laughs> yeah this girl is ridiculous um we have we have like all the bad things about me she likes and all the bad things about her i like <laughs> And that's very rare. So yes, this is that's what soulmates are. She grated her thumb on it on making um, soup. I... Grating carrots, right? I'll take this off now. Okay, like show them your injury. Gore reveal. Gore mm -hmm. reveal live stream. Austin says, "What happens when a man hits his peak around 30? Mm, some men hit their peak earlier, and some as late as in their fifties. Okay, here's your thumb. Put it over here. Oh, yuck." She sliced her whole thumbnail off. This is her war wound from grating <laughs> carrots to make us minestrone. Um, thank you, baby. Um, a man misses, hits his peak. I mean, around 30. There, Men have two peaks. I, I think I might have this drawn out somewhere. Men have an attractiveness peak, and then they have a money peak. And oh, we, have, we also have an overall peak, which is our... Um, combination of the two. And if you hit your peak and then you start going down, you just have to sort of give up. You know, you have to understand you're never going to get, nah, I don't have that drawn. You're never going to get the situation that you got before. So if you are a really attractive man, like, let me just do this with pink and blue to make it easy. Women, you know, start at like 18 and then go to 22 or whatever, and then go down really gradually. 
and then men have an attractiveness peak that's a little bit later and they go down a little bit less, right? And then they have a money peak that's later and goes down like that, like even less. And so most men are peaking somewhere around in that area, depending on how your life goes. After you hit your peak, the rest of your life is just a little bit more sad. That's it. Because you, you're not able to get what you used to get. You're supposed to be married by then. <laughs> you're supposed to be married and having kids by that point. That's how we're designed, but we don't live that way anymore. Uh, please open coaching soon. I might need it bad from a religious family, little dating experience. Maybe a bad picker, but don't want to risk my... I'm... Okay, C-dubs, try to inbox me. Maybe I can get you a session. Um, I think that I am going to wrap up soon. Um, there are not that many of the paid ones left. Brand 499, what's an appropriate age floor gap for 30, 35, 40, 45 year old man? Do you buy the half plus seven rule? Yeah, the half plus seven rule is like, a, it's a good general. So like if you're 40, it would be 20 plus seven, right? 40 equals 20 plus seven. If you're 50, it would equal 25 plus 7 is 27. 25 plus 7 equals uh, 32. Right? And that would be the youngest that you could date. Um, I'm violating that rule. Like, that's... Yeah, we blew that out of the water. What am I? 39. What was that? Half is uh, 20 equals... What is it? 19.5, right? Mm -hmm. Plus 7 would be 26.5. Yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, we destroyed that one. <laughs> um, So, like, I don't personally care about it. I didn't follow it. I think generally that, that the rule, like, people try to make rules like this to make sure that there are no power imbalances or anything going wrong in relationships, but I think it's much more important to just be sure that your relationship is healthy and that you know what you're doing and your partner knows what they're doing. I guess the the number rules exist because no one knows how to do that. I don't know. Um, it's really hard to guess. I guess an appropriate age, I guess you could use this rule as a way to judge if people, if other people will think it's okay. But personally, I just do it based on, is this person capable of having a relationship or not? Um, I'm going to leave soon, so no more paid ones, please. Um, I won't be able to get to them. Xander Isaacson, how do I identify what trait I have, behaviors I exhibit that make me seem immature, hard to respect, even amongst my peers and women around my age? God, what does that mean? How do I identify what traits, behaviors I exhibit that make me seem immature? You need to get reflections from others around you. Like if you're going out and interacting with people and they're saying that you seem immature, but they're not telling you why, you need to sort of ask them. You need to notice what you're doing that make people comfortable with you and uncomfortable with you. And you need to have friends who can be honest with you about things. If you don't get reflections on yourself, then you're not going to be able to learn what it is you're doing that push people away or bring them forward or bring them towards you. Immature slash hard to respect. Talk to the people that are closest to you. Ask them how they feel about that. Ju Juan, can you describe things a woman should bring to the table? Well, we live in a time where, you know, women bring a lot to the table. Some of them pay half. Some of them go 50-50. Um, women, you know, obviously are more nurturing. Uh, they typically do more of the housework and the child rearing, uh, especially if the man pays more. It's the word should that is difficult. Our relationships are are taking very different shapes lately because we've changed the whole financial economic situation. But 
I mean, I think that your answer, the answer to your question, you know, typically throughout time would be like respect, respect the man, um, you know, respect his decisions. Don't be quarrelsome. Um, make sure that he has what he needs. Make sure he is supported. Make sure that he's not, make sure that you're not undermining him. Make sure that you are bringing stability and uh, uh, peace and not noise and appreciation and love and yeah, those kinds of things. That's typical things that women bring to the table. I bring soup. Mm-hmm. Yes. And bring soup. Bring, <laughs> <laughs> bring food to the table. And smoothies. Peanut butter banana smoothie. <laughs> um, Alonso. What's P-E-N? Pen, $10. What could be a good test to see if she, roommate best friend, likes me? She may say no, but her actions don't match. Oh, so then you say she's flirting with you, but she says no. For example, sometimes I wake up and she slept next to me with tiny clothes, LOL. I don't know what informate what to give you in this situation. It seems like it's it seems like you should probably make little tiny little gestures, like maybe touch her on the shoulder somewhere safe and see how she responds to it. And if she likes it, then that would be a sign to touch her maybe on the elbow, I don't know, like a little closer. But don't just go don't just go straight for it and slam into it. It sounds like she's could either be screwing with you or wants you to make a move. What was it? What did you think? You should be aware just from what you've said about uh, like how this started where you had a wife and then she kind of inserted herself and pulled you away from that. If you escalate things, she might be like, oh, well, now I'm bored of you. Yeah, that's kind of tends to be what happens. But like you might like go for it. And as soon as you've like consummated that, then she's like, OK, I'm done. I need to find a new married guy. Yeah. So it could be like a homewrecker situation. It could be that she's just um, going for that experience of peak um, excitement where it's like, here's a guy who's supposed to be off limits. And then she's like excited and excited and excited. And then as soon as she gets it, she's like, okay, now I'm done. That could be, that's true too. Um, but I mean, it's a weird situation, man. You live with her, but She's flirting with you, but then she says no. It's a weird situation. Okay, two more, and I have got to go get food. I'm so hungry. Hey, chat. Hi, Cole. Thoughts on the fact that there's plastic in your blood and the rain in the food? Oh, dude, don't get me started. We're all eating poison all the time, and no one's doing anything about it. And that train crashed in Ohio, and, um, you know, we all had to get that... Uh, treatment the other year or uh, lose our jobs and lives and everything it's like um the f like our physical world has been messed with so bad that no one's healthy anymore i don't really know what to do about that what are you drawing my girlfriend's coloring um i i think that some of that is deliberate cole and i think that a lot of it is neglectful and i think that the reason that human beings experience catastrophic civilizational failure is because they don't make the right decisions. I think that evil turns on itself. J.J. Stone, do women want men that make more money themselves? Yes. Or do women want m men that make more money than other men? Both. It's both. They want you to be better, better than other men, but even, even if a woman is in the top 1%, right? If if she makes top 1% money and you make top 2% money, she's still going to be like, ew, I make more than you. So they want both. Fresh heck. That's funny. I have a midterm tomorrow. Please wish me luck. Good luck. I'm just going to go GL. Good luck on your midterm tomorrow. Is it midterm time already? It's March. Um, drunk pinata. Okay, last one, and then I'm going to bed. The recent next steps video was huge to me realizing how my marriage ended. I'm so glad about that. People made fun of me for making a video about a comedian, but the comedian is making jokes about real life. He's describing real life. I'm glad that you recognized what I was saying there. Seems small, but keeping on them on their toes is crucial. It, indeed, it is. Um. 
Okay, I'm about to wrap up. Do you ha- have anything to add? Like my girlfriend is here and she likes to participate. Um, I'm reading all the comments in the videos that I'm in and I see that people are betting on how long our relationship will last. And I just want to say I would like to join the betting market. <laughs> I would like to bet on the side of our relationship. I will bet um, infinite money. Let's so start a any, pool. If anyone wants to, uh, if anyone wants to uh, throw their money away, just uh, we'll, we'll start some all right. real money betting. We're starting a betting pool on how long we last. All right. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, you got to show me those comments. <laughs> Fitness philosopher says, "Are you millennial three alumni or similar life coach class?" Um, I. Don't know how to parse that sentence, but I'm a millennial. I'm I was 16 in the year 2000. Um, okay, I gotta run though. Sorry, I can't give your question more than that. Sorry, fitness philosopher. A millennial three alumni. Yeah, sure. I'm a I'm a millennial three alumni. Um, thank you all for being here. Have a good night. I'll see you next week. Goodbye. Is Mrs. Math autistic too? Probably. You're undiagnosed, right? Probably. <laughs> yeah, I probably. have probably uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she might be. Um Green says when will you do another QA? Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday at ten. Can you release a book? I am releasing a book. Um okay. Thanks everyone. Good night. <laughs>